Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about Russia's move to boost its non-energy exports. Now, it's commonly assumed around the world that Russia's economy is pretty much reliant on its energy resources. In fact, neocon warmongers like the batshit crazy John McCain even describe Russia as a gas station masquerading as a country. Yeah, energy exports have been important, but other exports over the year have been just as crucial. I mean, Russia is the second largest exporter of military equipment, the largest exporter of rich uranium nuclear fuel, and the world's largest wheat exporter, just for a few examples. However, in recent years, there's been a notable shift in the country's income structure, with a growing contribution coming from the non-energy and non-commodity sector. And Putin, uh, the president, has decided to direct the government to determine the further export potential of these markets and sectors through until 2030 and then identify strategies for enhancing them. Now, he's just directed particular focus on uh, non-energy and uh, agriculture. And the deadline for compliance is to April the 1st, 2025 now. The Ministry of Industry and Trade is developing a new project and it's called International Cooperation and Exports. Now the objective is to increase the proportion of non-raw materials, non-energy exports by a minimum of two-thirds by 2030 and agricultural exports by one and a half times. Now it's important to note that Russia's made serious strides in the realm of non-energy exports in the recent years. In the early 1990s, Russia's non-energy exports were very, very slight and small. However, there was an acceleration in the early 2000s due to increased demand in global markets and high prices for raw materials, which provided a lot of foreign exchange earning and it stimulated other industries like aluminium, steel, and they modernised and did a whole bunch of other stuff. In 2010s, Russia proactively pursued the diversification of exports, reducing its reliance on energy. And by 2024, uh, 2020, the export structure began to encompass a wider range of products from agro-industrial, metallurgy, chemicals, according to Yaroslav Kabakov, who's a director at the Finam Investment Company. Now, he states that the significant growth of non-energy exports began in the 2010s and was supported by the state programme for energy export development, including the International Cooperation and Export Programme. It says state support was instrumental in promoting Russia's non-resource goods abroad and creating trade mechanisms. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now for watching because uh, I do appreciate everybody who uh, is a viewer. Now, consequently, by 2021, non-energy exports had reached a record level of $194 billion. However, sanctions came in in 2022, 2023, and they caused significant damage. In 2023, non-energy exports declined to $146 billion from $190 billion in 2022, and that was just because of sanctions. Now, the performance of Russian non-resource, non-energy exports is significantly influenced by global pricing trends. Now, in 2021-2022, the non-energy, non-resource re reached record levels due to a sharp increase in prices for key stuff such as metals, food and fertilizer. However, there was a price correction in 2023, and it average decrease of these exports went down by 25%, and the discount in physical volumes was uh, actually more modest at 10%. Now, there was a resumption of growth in non-energy exports in 2024. I mean, over the first seven months, there's been a 5% increase, bringing the total to $89.9 billion. Now, it's anticipated that export growth will continue throughout 2024 by Russia's enhanced presence in Asian and African markets and the advancement of domestic industry and the expansion of the number of products that they offer. 
I mean, the tightening of sanctions has presented Russia with new challenges and the re-establishment of the non-resource, non-energy exports to 2021 levels may be hindered by sanctions, logistical difficulties and the financial transaction issues. And that might take a few years to overcome all of them. I mean, maintaining positions in developed markets and uh, like fertilizer, the metal sectors are important. This is Alexander Fanachuk, who is the president of Insula Academy. Now, he highlights the export of high-tech goods, which are concentrated in machinery, equipment, and other sectors like the nuclear sector. I mean, these haven't really seen much of a decline uh, compared with 2021, and their share of exports only fell uh, from 8.3% to 5.4%. And by 2030, these will have recovered at least partially and have made up for much of the loss. Now, the loss of European partners and the cessation of supplies has faced significant challenges to the restoration of exports. However, Russia as uh, companies are looking to the alternative solutions within the supply of essential components, increased costs and delivery times. And of course, they can now uh, do much more with the BRICS, with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the um, Eurasian Economic Union. I mean, the president has directed the government to provide a prompt clarification of its forecasts. And when they can do that, then the government, like it's done with the agricultural sector, can see that how it can definitely help and make the Russian economy grow its potential outside of the energy sector, particularly in the light of the global energy transition. I mean, that will cause a transformation and a growth in a number of key industries, including high technology, the agricultural complex, and things like the production of lithium and other rare metals and elements. I mean, Russia's IT sector saw a major growth of 15% compared to 2023, and that's increased demand for digitization and robotics. Agricultural sectors also showing very positive dynamics with exports growing by 12%. Now these present new opportunities by diversifying the economy and reducing the energy components. Now, one of the other promising areas for export growth is in 2030 is the agro-industrial complex, metallurgy and high-tech products, as well as mechanical engineering. So the export center, which is the Russian export centers, directed a number of countries and places that they're looking to really target, which is Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And they're looking at Russian suppliers of a wide range of products and services from uh, fertilizers in Brazil, uh, grains in Africa, etc. So to meet the demand for Russian goods, a new industrial base must be built on domestic technological solutions, according to the Russian Export Center. And that's something that they need to look at. I mean, there's a high demand for domestic consumer goods in the post-Soviet countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and these are ready processed foods, building materials, plastic products, furniture and household chemicals. Plus there's an increase in supply for equipment for the energy and railway sectors, nuclear power, railway engines, etc. So the countries the post-Soviet space and the Eurasian Economic Union and the Shanghai Cooperation Organizers will continue to be key markets for Russia. And that's due to the fact as a result of demographic changes, the demand will grow faster there than they are in Russia. So Russia's keen also to foster closer ties with the global south offering not only food, energy, resources and industrial raw materials, but solutions to their problems for the complete modernization of their whole energy, engineering and urban infrastructure, plus their educational, medical services and much more. Anyway, so this is all looking pretty uh, good. I mean, the trade turnover with friendly countries have grown to a level comparable with Russia's trade previously with the entire world. Yeah, you know, so it's all looking pretty uh, incredible. I mean, in 2021, friendly countries accounted for 60% of Russia's non-resource, non-energy export. And this figure's now risen to 86%. When we say friendly countries, that's SCO, ASEAN, BRICS, etc. And those are all expected to grow even more. I mean, there's obviously certain logistical limitations and a lack of financial instruments for uh, exporters, which are hindering, impeding growth. 
I mean, some of the current restrictions that are hindering the reunion can be mitigated, and the government's going to help overcome these the transactional changes and the problems that, to develop the robust infrastructure challenges. Anyway, all in all, things are looking pretty positive for uh, Russia. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe, please share. And I look forward to talking to you all again. Thank you.